everyone, we have already reached the lecture number 15 of our Coffee Break programming course and today we'll talk about arithmetic operators and arithmetic expressions. So actually we have a lot of work today, uh, to do today because we uh, have to analyze our homework from the last lecture and we will end with a new homework today and in between we will talk about uh, we will remind ourselves what kinds of operators and expressions we saw in the previous lecture and, and today we will talk about the arithmetic operators and how to determine the data type of an arithmetic expression. And then we will also see two more things about type conversions and printing out real numbers. So let's start with our homework analysis. In, in the homework we wanted to let the user enter a year and the day of week of the 1st January of that year and we had to print out the days of week of all the first days of each month of that year. So the basic idea here was that the day number n, if we want to establish the day of week of the day number n of the year, so this is the same as the day number n percentage 7. So we remember this percentage operator which means the reminder which are left when the, uh, when the number n is divided by 7 in integer numbers. So if, for example, uh, we, want to, uh, we want to clarify what is the, uh, let's say, um, day number 50 of year, this will be some day in February, um, so the day number 50 of the year will be the same day of week as the day number 50 percentage 7, which is how many? Which is of course 1, okay? Because uh, 15 uh, divided by 7 is uh, 7 holes, 49 divided by 7 and 1 is the reminder, so this is 1. So the 15th day of the year is the same day of week as the first day of um, of the year, okay, well, it's January 1st. So this is the basic idea, and here we can see the functional code of the homework. I won't uh, show you in detail all the whole, the whole program. Here the whole printout, I, I, I'm sure you are able to uh, establish the correct printout, uh, printing out all those uh, different uh, lines uh, to make the box and uh, so on. But uh, after user enters uh, those, these, these two variables, year and day, so for the January we can just print out the day. This is the day of week of the first January because the user has just entered that thing. And afterwards we have to calculate the number of the day for each first day of, of each month. So for example if we perform operation like that, we say that now the new value of day will be day plus 31 because now we want to calculate which day of year is the 1st February. Okay, If the January 1st is day number day, this is a week, the day of week of the 1st January and if we add 31 to it, we will get a new number for the 1st February. And now we can just say that the February 1st is this day of week, okay, day percentage 7, because this is the same day of week as, uh, as just writing day, okay, as we saw in the previous slide. So, and this is how we do it for every next month. The difference is just uh, that uh, each month uh, has different uh, uh, count of days, so if we now want to get the correct number for the 1st March, here we assign today uh, 29, because uh, February has 29 days in this particular year, 2020, okay, and so on. So I haven't uh, written the whole program here, of course, but I'm sure you uh, can now understand what goes. Okay, so let's uh, start with uh, today's topic. 
And let's start uh, by reminding ourselves the kinds of operators and expressions from the previous lecture. So we saw that there were three kinds of operators, arithmetic operators, comparison operators, and logical operators. And the kind of expression was determined by the kind of the final operator of that expression. So we saw that there were two expression kinds, arithmetical expressions and logical expressions. And if the final operator is arithmetic operator in an expression, it gives us arithmetic expression. And if the final operator in, in the expression is one of those two, comparison of logical operators, then it gives us uh, a logical expression. And uh, today in this lecture we will concentrate on the first group of operators, to, on the arithmetic operators. So let's see what are arithmetic operators. So these five are arithmetic operators. So in total there are five. Plus, minus, multiply, multiplication operator and division operator. These are standard four operators. And also this percentage operator, which we already know now. This is a, remi a reminder of the, di the division in integers. These are five arithmetic operators. And these operators are all binary, meaning that they all need two operands. So if we take some of those five arithmetic operators, we write something as an operand on one side of the operator, and we write something as an other operand uh, on the other side. And thus we do what? We build arithmetic expressions as we saw before. So arithmetic operators are used for building arithmetic expressions. So this together, this is an arithmetic expression. And arithmetic expressions can be simple ones, which we build from variables and values. So we just use variables or values as operands on both sides of the operator. But uh, then we saw that we can also build more complicated arithmetic expressions from simple ones. So for example, in this case, we have used an arithmetic expression 5 plus 7 as an operand in another arithmetic expression. Okay, and here we build even more complicated and here we build even more complicated. This is one arithmetic expression as one operand and this is another arithmetic expression as another operand for this final operator, division operator. And this is a new, more complicated arithmetic operation. Again, because the final operator which is being performed, in this case is division operator, is one of those arithmetic operations. Therefore, we know that this whole thing here is an arithmetic expression. And for arithmetic expressions, we, we said that the result will be a number in all cases. This is why it's called an arithmetic expression. But the big question here is, is it int or is it double, this number? the result of an expression. And today we will see how we can determine the data type of arithmetic expression. And actually the rule is a very simple, one simple rule. So the data type of arithmetic expression is just determined by the data types of its two operands. So we all only uh, look at the final two operands. So, so we, we saw that we have to look at the final operator to determine the kind of an expression. And now we look at the final two operands for this final operator. And if both these operands are int operands, the result will be int for the whole expression. And if at least one operand is double, then the result will be double. Okay, so let's see a couple of examples here to understand better. So here in this case, we have two variables x and y. x is declared as a double variable, y is declared as int variable, and here we assign values to those two um, variables, let's say 18 and 10. It's uh, done correctly. We can assign also this 18 to x, because uh, double uh, includes int, because every integer number is of course also a double, so we can uh, assign int numbers also to double variables. And see, here we want to print out the value of x divided by y. So what will be the result here? The result, of course, will be 
1.8 okay because the result uh, so first of all we have to understand that this is an arithmetic expression it's very easy because we use the, the final operator is also the only one operator here is the division operator which is an arithmetic operator and this is the arithmetic expression and now we have to understand that this is a double expression the result of this expression will be a double uh, real value because at least one of those two operands x and y is a double this x is declared as a double type of a variable therefore the result will be double 1.8 and another example here very similar one also x is 18 y is 10 we again divide x by y but the difference here is that both variables here are declared as ints so no doubles here so here we have two int operands both operands are int values int variables and this means that the result of the expression as said here will be int both operands are int the result will be int and this means that the division will be done in whole numbers and the result will be just one so not two not rounding here this is what uh, in mass is denoted by those rectangular brackets if we write something like that it, it means this is the whole part the integer part of the division if we write like that it is just uh, omitting the everything that that is after the comma so the result will be one okay so let's uh, now try to answer for yourselves uh, what does this program print out so here we can see something similar to the previous example and i'll give you 10 seconds but if if you need more time of course feel free to pause the video and uh, for example here user enters something uh, x and y values of x and y let's assume for example that the user enters numbers 17 and 5 respectively as values for x and y what does this what does this program print out And now, actually, only two possible answers can, can be here. Either 3.4, okay, if because 17 divided by 5, here, uh, this is value of DAO, which is being printed out. 17 divided by 5 is 3.4. Or another uh, version would be 3, if the division is done in integer numbers as we saw before so which is the case here so it's a bit catch that uh, here is uh, the double type var uh, variable introduced here the variable dal but actually to find out the result of the expression we only look at the data types of both uh, operands as we uh, saw before so x and y are both ints so the result here will be three and it prints out number three okay afterwards we can assign this value of three to double type variable dal it's not a crime we can do it and then we will print out also three but uh, it doesn't restore mystically somehow the lost thing after the comma because first of all we calculate the result it is three and then we assign this three to either an int variable or a double variable. Variable in this case, it doesn't matter. Okay. But uh, sometimes we, of course, want to get a real division. Uh, also, in cases when we divide to int values, for example, and there are ways how to do it in C++. How to get a real division when we want to divide to integer mm, variables. So. We need to tell the compiler that one of both operands is a real number because if the compiler assumes and perceives one of the operands as a real number the division will go on normally as, as in real numbers so how it's done so we have a special operator which is called a type conversion operator these 
brackets, no more brackets, and we can write inside brackets the name of data type uh, to which we want to convert this particular variable. So before a variable in, a, in, in the expression, we can write the new data type. So we say that let's assume in this one particular expression that x is double. We can do it because if x is an int type variable, we can look at x as, uh, as to a double because every int number is also a double number, okay? So and in this case, we will get a real division. And in this case, uh, the result will, would, would be 3.4. And this uh, thing in brackets can be written before any variable in our expression. So also we can uh, do it like that. X divided by this thing, double before Y means the same thing. At least one of both operands must be double in order to uh, get a real division, okay? And also, if we want, we can write uh, double before both variables. So, also in this case, the uh, division will be in real numbers, but of course this is totally unnecessary, uh, but, also, but it also doesn't bring us uh, any harm. So, on the final thing of today, uh, a specifics, a little specifics of printing out real numbers. Let's see a couple of examples how we can uh, print out mm, some numbers here. So the first uh, example here is to print out the value of such an expression 2 divided by 3. So what will be the value printed out here? And it will of course be 0. Okay, so again here we print out the integer part of the division because we, we are dividing two integers. Okay, two ints, two and three integer numbers. So now if we want to print out it like, mm, like in real numbers, uh, real division, we can use this type conversion operator, which I saw showed you in the previous slide, but also we can write it something like that. We can write that we divide 2.0 by three. And this 2.0 is also perceived as a double, a real number, okay? And in this case, we will print out the real division, which is 0 0.666667. It can be the, uh, a different, it can be a longer sequence or shorter, depending on the environment and uh, some other things. But uh, actually, we would like perhaps to print out the number to the given precision for uh, for our liking. So there are some ways how to do that. And there is one specific function called set precision, which allows us to print out the number, the real number to the given precision. So to the given precision here in the brackets, we specify how many meaningful digits we want to print out. And this is how it's used. We use it uh, inside the cout operator, uh, before the number that uh, we want to print out to the specified precision. And in, uh, in this case, if we write it like that, the printout will be like that, 0 0.67, two meaningful numbers. But actually, what does it mean, meaningful number? Meaningful numbers are uh, can also be before the comma here, uh, zero before comma uh, is not considered a meaningful number. Also, zeros afterwards here, after comma, also are not considered uh, meaningful numbers, but for example, if we write it like that, 4.0 divided by 3, so the result is 1.3333333, and so on. And in this case, set precision 2 gives us two meaningful numbers again, uh, but uh, those numbers are not after the comma, both, both of them, but one of them is before the comma, because it is not zero in this case. So in this case, uh, 1.3 will be printed out. But uh, for it to work, for this set precision, set precision to work, you have to append one extra line at the beginning of your program. You have to include such a line, include input-output manipulations, your money. And what does it mean at the beginning of your program? It means here in this uh, first part of the program, where you, for, for now, you have to just write those introductory lines. And here, 
within the main function here are normally your code the only place in the program where you can write your code uh, but now for the set precision to work you also have to uh, include the one line here okay so don't worry about uh, what those lines mean we will talk about them a lot later and now the homework so you can try to do something new again so let's assume we live in a year that starts with Monday for simplification reasons and now allow user to enter the number of day of that year so number of day and print out two things so first of all print out how many weeks of this year have passed by the end of the day this will be a real number and which week of the year is that day in this will be an integer number of course okay so for example if a user enters 37 as the day of the year 37 is uh, some february february 6 i think yes and uh, 37th day of the year then your program how to print out 5.29 uh, this is how many weeks have passed by the end of the 37th day so this is 5.29 weeks and currently we are living in the sixth week naturally if uh, more than five weeks have passed we are now living in the sixth week of the year so therefore we assume that the uh, year starts with monday because uh, we assume that uh, with the first january starts the first whole week and uh, we don't have to see the parts of the week and so on so uh, okay so uh, at first it might uh, look very easy to do but a hint here is that it may not be as easy as it seems it's it's not very complicated as, uh, also of course you have to exploit this division uh, operator and to divide either in whole numbers in integer numbers or in the real numbers but you have to think a bit uh, more about how to use this division to to get right those two numbers okay so let's just try to solve this homework for the next lecture okay so today we saw a lot of things we analyzed our previous homework we saw kinds of operators and expressions once more and we saw in more detail the arithmetic operators and we saw how to determine the date type of an arithmetic expression and then we saw also the type conversion operators see this was those round brackets and we saw how we can print out real numbers in different manners and we saw the homework so this is it for this lecture stay tuned subscribe to my channel and see you very soon Thank you.